Good morning, I'm Kat again and I'm going to answer some questions from my Indian basket weaving tutorial. Some people have asked me what kind of rope I was using. In my last video I was using um, this kind of, it's a synthetic fiber. It does not feel like some kind of organic rope. It, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I don't think it's hemp or anything of the sort. It's not a natural fiber. It looks like plastic, but it has a brown color. I don't know. You can also use the plastic um, twisted rope too, as well. Any rope, it's about a quarter of an inch, okay? So it's about a quarter inch thickness I would use. And I would buy at least 20 to maybe a hundred feet of rope depending on the size of the basket. Let's say you wanted to make a very small basket, maybe about eight inches tall, you could probably get about 30 feet and that would work for you. If you're gonna make something really, really big, you might want to need, you might need something like 40 feet of rope um, or more than that. You'll notice that your ends of your rope will fray. You can burn them with the cigarette lighter. You can put tape around them, whatever you like to do with your rope. I just try to twist them back together and then I burn them. I'll clip off the excess with a scissors and just burn excess. Burn the rope with a cigarette lighter. See, I told you it's plastic because it's just weird like that. Okay, I don't burn it too much so that it knots up. I don't want it to knot up or anything at the end. I want it to be smooth. I don't want it to be bulky at the tip. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to start your basket. You will need needles. There should they should be big enough. They should be yarn needles, big enough to hold yarn in the eye of the needle. Uh, you'll probably need two or more depending on how many colors you want to be using for the basket and if you want to do intricate patterns with lots of different colors you're going to need a lot of needles or else you're going to be switching back and forth with your needles all the time so you're going to need needles boom you need 20 to 30 feet of one a quarter inch rope you're going to need a scissors for sure Definitely gonna need a scissors and you're gonna need yarn and There you go. That's what you're gonna need So I'm gonna show you how to start one you're gonna need it to have to cut a piece of string a piece of yarn That's long pretty long when I say yarn long. I mean at least Maybe your height. Okay, if you're maybe maybe about four to five feet long so the yarn should be about four to five feet long initially so you're gonna cut a piece of yarn that's four to five feet long. place a needle on the end I know a lot of people were telling me they couldn't hear any sound from the previous video on this so I'm glad to help out you put a needle on the end so you're treading a needle and you're making sure that one side is shorter than the other side so leave the other side long you're not knotting the both ends together. Now, you take the end of the rope, you're taking the end of the rope in your left hand, okay? Taking the end of the rope in your left hand and the end, the longest end of the yarn in the right hand, like this. You're going to place the little yarn over the end of the rope in opposite directions so they should overlap each other like this. So rope in your left hand, yarn in the right hand. You're gonna hold the yarn and the rope together at the tip of the rope. Hold them like this firmly in your hand. You're going to take the yarn and you're going to wrap it in the direction away from you. So if you're pointing away from yourself, that is the way you should be wrapping. You should be wrapping that way, that way. So you're wrapping it, what is that, clockwise around the rope with your right hand. So you're wrapping from the tip and you're wrapping 
against each other down the road like this. So it shouldn't be packing them up on top of each other. You're wrapping next to each other, next to each other, next to each other each time. So you just keep doing that. And make sure to pull tight. You should not be doing this slack. I would say that your the wrap section of your rope should be about the length of your pinky finger or maybe just a bit longer. You should make sure that the string that you placed on is wrapped under the rope. It does not stick up out of the rope like that. It should be under the blanket all the time, not sticking up. Okay. So it's just like this. Should be about the length of your pinky finger. Now, you take the end of the rope and you bend it down. So you try keep bending it like this until it becomes flexible. So you're bending it down, bending it. Just keep doing that until it stays in that kind of direction and it's flexible enough to hold it in that in that position without bouncing back. So just keep bending it for a little bit. Now once it stays in a pretty um, close spiral, all you have to do is take it and turn it in on itself until you make like a cinnamon roll, okay? So it should be a little bit longer than, than your pinky finger. It shouldn't be the same size, okay, wait, yeah, pretty much. Um, and you're bending it down and then you roll it in on itself like a cinnamon roll. See? So there should be no space in between of here. You shouldn't be able to see all these little spaces. You can push them back together or fix them up later by um, sewing. Now I'm holding the rope still in between of my thumb, my thumb and my index finger. I'm pinching it like it's a button or a bead or something. Now I have my needle in my right hand. Okay? Just like this. If you're not holding it like this, if you're holding it like this or you're holding it in the opposite hand, then you're doing it wrong. If you're left-handed, um, you'll have to hold it in the other hand. But uh, if you're right-handed, this is the way you're going to hold it. Anyway, a lot of people kept asking me what's going on at this point. Now you have to attach the whole section together so that it stays into this cinnamon roll position. Okay, so what is going on is you're going to make sure that this string is coming towards you from the point where you stopped wrapping. So from the point where you stopped wrapping, this string must be trapped between of the, the roll coming towards yourself. Now, the needle has to go down. If you look, there's a rope, there's a rope here and there's a rope there where it bend down. But it's going, not here, but it's going down here. Okay? It's going down right here. So we're going to push it in. What we have to do is make like a figure eight kind of thing. So it goes down, the needle goes down first. Hold up. If it falls out, no more problem. The needle goes down. And don't pull too tight as yet because it might pull the whole coil out of sync and you won't be able to hold it. Now the rope is gonna the string is gonna come back over this way and the needle is gonna go back down in that same position. So it's going down there too. So I'm trying to make a figure eight. So it's like it's like going like this. Down and then back up and around. Then back up and around, back to the spot. So I'm tying all these three sections together. This part, that part, and the part down here. So imagine that this is a rope here. This is a rope. That's a rope. That's a rope. The three different coils coming across here. So I'm going to go... This is the part I'm going down, then back up. Then around and back up. And then back to the spot where I'm going. Because I need to attach everything together so it stays. 
So as I said, I went down here first, then I'm, now I'm going, the string is going to come back around and go down here. So it's, it's going to go back around like that and down. So now I've tied these two sections together, this section and that section. Now I have to go up through here, so not there anymore. I'm not going here, but I'm going here. So notice it's like a coil, it goes boom. So it has three sections, one, two, and three, up here. So now I'm going back up here, back through here. here and now my rope is going around this way to come back around so I can tie it here so this is this part here so I went from here and I went down and I went back down through there come back up through there and then I came around and came back up through here now this is the part that I'm doing now I'm coming back through here so I'm pushing it right back where it started I stopped wrapping and so now all the sections should be tied together. If it's not perfectly tied together, then do it again. You just go over the same steps about two times. So you go, so the string is up between there where you stopped wrapping. And then you go down through the first, the coil below it. So you go down, then you go back down through the same spot so the, rope, the string can come back around and tie these two pieces together. Then you go back up through here where you stopped wrapping and then go around and come back up through there again. So now all three sections should be tied together properly and it should not be able to rebound anymore. Now from here what you have to do is wrap it three times. I know in my previous vi uh, video I said five but if you want it to be extremely tight and not and unmovable, <laughs> immobile, um, you're gonna have to wrap it three times, no more than three times otherwise the basket will be very flexible. So. Wherever you stopped wrapping the three times, you have to stick the needle directly across from where you stopped wrapping in the previous row, in the previous coil. So let's say this is the center coil here, right? And it's coming around like this all the time. Wherever you stop wrapping, you have to line the needle up directly across so when you stop wrapping and stick it wherever it is, if you stop wrapping here, you would stick it in in there. So it's like not down between here. This is where you stop wrapping, but it will be down in here. Now there, just imagine that this is there's no space here, but and we're just imagining that this is the coil that we're making. So the needle have to come and attach to this previous piece of rope over here. So you keep going, if it's around here, then you'll stick it somewhere around here. See? So it has to match. Okay. So, you line the needle up and you say, okay, well it has to go in there somewhere. So the needle always goes down first, then back up, okay? Down first. Then it goes back up where you started from back up where you started from. So it's wherever you stop wrapping, it goes directly across into the previous rope, not through the rope, but in the space between the rope and the other rope. And then it comes around. It's like it's going around the rope and back up, kind of like a fi it's making a figure eight. And it's coming back up where you, where you, between the rope you're wrapping and the previous one. So now it's attached. You pull tight, you squeeze the coil and you start wrapping immediately. One, two, three. Okay, three times. Make sure that rope, that, that string is facing towards you in between here. It should be between the, the rope that you're wrapping and the one you wrapped before. 
and it's coming towards you. You squeeze it, you line it up, you say, okay, well, it has to be somewhere around here that I have to stick my needle. Now, it doesn't always go down into the center because it does get bigger as you make them. So it goes down, the needle goes down first, back up where you stopped wrapping, okay? Back up to where you stopped wrapping from. So it went down here, and it came back up here. Then you squeeze tight, squeeze tight and start wrapping. One, two, three. Squeeze it in. Make sure that the, the yarn is coming towards you. You're wrapping away from yourself all the time, so it's going that way around the rope like this. It's not coming towards you like this. Yes? So it should be going away from you like that. Okay? So now you have to go down again. I wrap three times. I'm going down. Oops, I might have got it in a knot. That's okay. And then you come back up where you saw. So I went down through there and I came back up through here. Always down first, then up. Some is very different for people who are left-handed, but I, I am not left-handed, so I can't show you that right now, but I'll think about it and come back to that question. Um, let me show you how to fill up some of these gaps. These gaps, sometimes people have little gaps in their things. You can Sometimes you can just push them across and they'll fix. But sometimes they're so big because it's where um, you where the rope bend, bent. So now you have to go around and fix it while you come back around. So while you're wrapping it around the yarn, you're coming back and you're sewing it, you have to sew it across exactly where the gaps are so that you can fix those those gappy areas yes one two three squeeze needle down needle up squeeze one two three push it together if you have spaces okay yes sometimes that happens and the rope is the string is towards you, needle down in the previous coil. Then needle up where you stopped wrapping it at. Squeeze tight, wrap again, one, two, three. Squeeze it together, make sure the string is coming towards you. Line it up and say, okay, well, it's stopping somewhere around here. Push it down, then push it back up where you started from. Squeeze tight, pull the string, one, two, three. Um, make sure the string is coming towards you. Line up the needle, okay, now it's somewhere around here. So now you have to push it down in the previous coil somewhere around there. It moves, the space where you push it will always move once you're, you're turning around a corner and then you push it back up between there. Now some people ask me, do you go behind the string that you were wrapping with, that you attached? Yes, you do. You make sure to do that so that it stays in place. You pull tight and you wrap again. One, two, three. Make sure the string is between there. You squeeze it together. Um, the needle goes down across from where you stop wrapping and then back up where you stopped wrapping behind the string that's there. See that string that's right there? It has to go behind it. Okay, so as I come around I have to fix a lot of these little gaps. gap there needs to be fixed so you place the string over the gap and um, attach attach and you see now I see so 
So I covered the yarn, the yarn that I'm attaching is now covering that gap right there and I pull it down and make sure that it stays in that place. Or if I need to sew it again, I can. I, I might wrap it once or twice just so that I can get back into that spot and cover up that little gap. So you don't want to see any of these gaps in your rope. You don't want to see it. It's ugly. It makes the basket look kind of untidy and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes if you have a small space in your basket, you can also fix that too by um, attaching it more when you come around like this. You can attach it some more. To try, am I waiting for the sun to set on the light? Okay, now I'm almost Feel at the end of my yarn. Now I have to change over my yarn. So, what I will do is I'll cut another piece of yarn that's about maybe three to four feet long doesn't have to be long as long as the first yarn and I will definitely thread my needle with it I like to roll it if the ends are fraying or lick it and I place it, the needle on the end well, probably need to cut off some and just roll it in the direction that it's twisting in. So there's no progression for me. Make sure to leave one end short and one end long. Now watch how I how I'll attach a new piece. Make sure that you pull tightly on the piece that's already attached. I'll cut off the excess. If there's a lot of string hanging, I will cut off some of it so that there's not too much bulk. So just like how you started, you let the excess string hang on the, the rope. Take up the end of the long new piece of yarn. So this is a new piece of yarn that I'm going to attach on now. And I'm placing it in the same direction as the other string. So there are two pieces of yarn going in that direction, that direction over the rope. I'm going to hold it right where I stopped wrapping. So just like how you hold it right up at the tip when you started it, then you're going to start wrapping away from yourself again. Point in that direction. That's the direction you're wrapping around like this. Not like towards yourself this way. So it's around that way. Around that way. And you still only wrap it three times when you're attaching it. You only wrap it three times. Period. So now I have two strings that's going to be like under the blanket. You can't let them stick up in the air because that'll look um, really untidy. So just where you stop wrapping, you're going to stick the needle directly across where you stop wrapping from. When you wrap it three times, you're not, you're, going, you're not sticking it here. You're sticking it directly across from where you stopped wrapping in the previous space so it's not going in the space that you stop wrapping this string has to be up between here between the rope that you're wrapping on in the previous one and your needle has to line up from where you're wrapping directly across or else you're gonna have weird strings that are going all over the place so you don't want the string to be all over here like this this looks weird and, and it looks untidy so you line it up and it has to go right there so it goes, the needle goes down first, then it goes back up where you stop wrapping from, see, back up. So pull tight, squeeze the coils, pull the string tight and start wrapping and now you're making sure that all these little 
um, things that you have here, these little strings are staying on the, the wrapped areas. And I'm coming around to clean up this, this gap that was there when I bent the rope. You line up the needle, you push it down into the previous space. Yeah, and you're putting it back up so it went around the previous rope and back up to the space that you then you pull tight, you squeeze the coil and you start wrapping again. Make sure that it's on, all these little strings are under there. Now, see I'm at that spot where I have to cover up, I can cover up my um, gaps with the string. So I'm covering it up like this. See, so now it's covered. And if I need to do it again, I might just wrap one time, like I said before. And I wrap it, oops, I see it across. And I wrap it one time and come back and just do it again. Straight down, needle down, always down first, and then back up. And you can fix them and adjust them so that they are in the accurate position that you want them to be in. Oops. Sometimes you get a knot, try to take it out without pulling on everything. Yeah, you get knots. <laughs> you get knots sometimes. Oh crap, I think it's a bad knot. <laughs> oh gosh, if this happens and you can't get the knot out, we'll just cut it off. Oh boy, come on baby. Come on baby. Come on baby. Come on, you know you love me. You know you love me. Yes! No! <laughs> oh boy! Okay! Yes! Yes! I am here! I think I got it! Okay! Got two more minutes left in this video now. Let's see. I got it. Okay, good. I got it. So you can take your time to unwrap that. Okay. Make sure to pull it and make sure all those strings that you're holding are underneath the rope. See, they can be sticking up. If they stick up like this in the air, you wrap it over like this. It's going to look retarded. Look at that. That looks stupid. You don't want to have that sticking up in your piece. That makes it look unfinished, unclean, untidy, everything. You know, so needle is directly across from where you start wrapping. Down. <laughs> and then back up where you start from. Yes. Okay, I hope that helps you. And I will show you how to do in the next video. I'm going to show you how to make elaborate, elaborate scenes like beach scenes and other things. I think first I'm going to teach you how to do a simple. Uh, uh, decoration. Uh, last time I taught you how to do a diamond. This time I, I might teach you how to do a heart. And then I'll teach you how to do an elaborate beach scene. So come back next time and you will get to see some extreme designs on these pots. Indian basket weaving. I'm Kat. Catriona aka Kat on I on um Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. You can find me, Catriona, aka Cat. And don't worry, when you get big, you get to a big basket. A big base. This is how big the base should be. I'm getting ready to do another video and show you what you do from there.